Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Marconi FM AM signal generator TF995A. It's from 1961. And it's an, I think it's an all tube device. At least we got uh, 13 tubes in this one. And it is very, very special. It's full of really, really funny features. Okay, this oscillator handles a very wide frequency range all the way from 1.5 and to 220 megahertz. I got some problems with the light here. Oh, it is possible to see that, right? So what is this frequency factor? We got a lot of funny factors and stuff going on here on the screen. So this will be the different range, ranges you select. And they are a little bit um, different the way that the, this is manufactured inside this unit. Um, actually, there's one oscillator that is running at uh, 4.5 to 9 megahertz. So this is the main oscillator and it is of course adjustable using this dial. But then we've got multipliers. So uh, the different ranges here, they are created by multiplying that oscillator by either 3, 2 and 2 and 2. But the lowest range is actually a mix uh, with a th 30 megahertz uh, fixed oscillator. I think I will show you guys uh, a block diagram. Yeah, let's do that. Here is the block schematic. I'm sorry the quality uh, from the manual is a little bit bad. So I'm going to try and zoom in and see if we can uh, actually read what is going on here. So, like I said, this is the RF oscillator. It goes from 4.5 to uh, 9 megahertz. So, uh, and uh, this is the one you're adjusting uh, from the front panel. Then there's an opportunity to enable a crystal oscillator. And the RF uh, output here is mixed together with the crystal oscillator and the crystal check is actually a, a jack connector on the front where you put in headphones. So the idea is you adjust the RF oscillator uh, so that it beats with the crystal oscillator and the result is the lowest possible frequency. And then you fine tune uh, some of the fine dials on the front and this way your RF oscillator is now uh, perfectly aligned. So the RF uh, oscillator goes to the first times three multiplier. And this uh, output, you can, you can see there's a line here directly to the band switch. And then you can go to the output amplifier. Uh, see, uh, an attenuator and, and filters and all that kind of stuff. So this is the, the output band selector. But the output also, see, from the first uh, times three multiplier, then it goes to the next time three. Uh, oh, sorry, this is a times two and a times two and a times two. This way you can create uh, all the way to 220 megahertz. But the output from this oscillator, from, from this point, see, it goes into a 30 megahertz beat oscillator and mixer. And now <laughs> it uh, gives an output from 1.5 to 13 megahertz. And then of course you need a low pass filter and then an output here. It could actually uh, have been, uh, they could have made this to go all the way to zero hertz uh, actually, if, uh, if the output here was uh, kind of uh, synced to uh, uh, 30, uh, but that's just not the way it is uh, made. So we are ready to power this up the first time as 
always I got a good <laughs> solid ground connection because if there is a leak or something I don't want to blow up any more of my equipment uh, the mains connector uh, of this unit is not with protective earth so I need to pr protect myself and my equipment I don't want to get electrocuted anyway look at this uh, the frequency scale I mean I think this 10 20 40 80 160 kind of stuff it really say it all about the multiplication kind of way that it works right so I've selected 13 to 27 so that means this is 20 as far as I can see uh, I should put all those styles to zero so that means I'm not doing any kind of compensation and then let's that was mains applied and 30 90 70 60 50 watts I think we've got light got a little a little dim lamp here oh well, yes and we got output Oy, 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 look at that output are you kidding me that is not clean at all oy, oy, oy. this is just full of harmonics and all kind of bad stuff but okay the average is 20 megahertz so that is maybe fine but wow look at that it's so full that is really wild it is very very obvious there's something with the oh. but anyway the frequency is spot on I am very impressed about that and am I using any kind of modulation here what am I okay that is CV Ooh. so that was AM and that is have we got some FM AM seems to be working right and what is that we need to adjust some carriers kind of stuff okay yeah here we go so this is what we needed to do set modulation no is that probably FM no FM what am I doing wrong here No, I'm oh yeah meter reads some FM mm, zero FM is what we got so okay that is the state of this unit we need FM somehow oh it's just okay let's check this uh, oscillator here so let's just dial down here a lot then we'll be we will be able to see the the modulation right so let's see if this is yeah good so the modulation amplifier works that is of course needed and yes this is the variable and and we can of course use this one to read uh, the aim but nope FM so before I open and uh, see if I can find the FM uh, error I'm just going fast uh, through the different ranges and see what else I can see so this is 40 megahertz and that is also quite close let's go for the next range oh so there's something we need to adjust here with the carrier so this is 50 to 80 that is this one so that should be 80 and that is also very close to 80 and then the last one again adjust the, the carrier so that should be 160 and that is also 160 but still we can see there's a little bit of uh, other frequencies left but I guess it, 
this unit is not supposed to be uh, super clean um, because it's so wide band so that means uh, the filters can't be that uh, sharp um, actually seems to be quite stable when it comes to level and all that right yeah I think it definitely it is open time I want to see oh that one that one is missing is that used for FM as well so that is uh, the 30 megahertz um, injection amplifier and all that now we know all the other multi pliers they're working but this one there's no output ha ha that is interesting not even a slight little beep set carrier uh, we get a little bit of uh, squeak through here that's probably the um, isolation from the mixer we are seeing here so definitely i need to go and have a look now i got two faults to find great Whew, we are in that was not that easy because to poke this out and get it through this and this one is stuck in between here and i don't know what what else oh, this is the main filter <laughs> that is some heavy duty stuff not too bad so that will be a power supply and what do you think that is that capacitor is just completely leaked and puked and this can of course explain uh, all the funny uh, output because I mean we got probably a lot of mains of ripple all over the place so that is real bad but why have we got two missing tubes in the power supply so that means probably some voltages are missing so I need to unscrew that one so I can pull that plug do a little bit of service on the power supplies we've got to check all the fuses oh what is that we've got some Ooh, that one needs cleaning huh this is probably why we got no modulation and all that so yike and uh Oh, some really pretty blue capacitors <laughs> wow they're nice that is a nice color yep we got a few diodes as well oh, that is oh, let me sit down here again i was just a little bit excited about all this poking around and getting this unit out <sighs> look at that holder for that tube isn't that just pretty but it's all the way up this this transformer i mean that is not too good this design so i bet all the good stuff is inside Ooh. i need to go clean this and then i will be back so here is the power supply. I took it out for a deeper inspection. <laughs> Look at the transformers. They're just dipped and soaked in a thick, thick layer of varnish. Oh, that is insane. They're not going to fall apart. <laughs> oh, about the missing tubes v11 and v15 well, that's a pretty good explanation for that oops let's try not break something see the diode in here see the diodes let's look at the schematic for a better explain so in the schematic you can see the two rectifier uh, tubes 
making a positive and a negative high voltage. And of course those tubes make uh, well, quite a lot of heat. And by replacing them with diodes, all this heat is saved. So this is a good uh, power optimization. Oh, by the way, let's look a little bit more. And we find two diodes, of course, because this V11 is a double rectifier diode. So that is how it's supposed to be. And the other side of the transformer, well, one side of the transformer uh, goes to this capacitor and together with the two diodes this creates a negative voltage and this is of uh, course uh, regulated with uh, V14 for a minus uh, 85 uh, volts and here's a, a positive uh, 260 volts and uh, it goes first to the capacitor and then via the inductor to the filter capacitor and then out. I took off the rear shield of the output attenuator and look at the mechanical construction of this attenuator. It's just really, really nice. Oh, look how the how the contact is kind of riding. So it goes to ground before it goes to the next. Oh, that is some nice attenuator, and then everything just goes around here in the ring. That is more or less how it looks like yeah that is something it is super super tight I mean <sighs> I'm nearly breaking my fingers here so how's the other one looking but that's not so easy to uh, pull apart we got some parts here so and this is the other one they're both a little bit special. I really like the this contact. It's a really, really tough click feeling. I had to desolder something here. So there's a well an inductor and some resistors and some stuff. Maybe there's a little lamp in here or something like that. I don't know exactly. But it must be something like that, right? Hmm. Ooh, that was a little bit tight fit. To get those in, go in the little clickety click and put in the screws and stuff, that was not that easy. But I mean, there's plenty of room to play with here. As you can see, hooey oi oi. <laughs> so now I'll solder the wire back on here. As always, I owe you a little look inside the magic box. Let's see if I can lift this up. Oh, I can't do that with one hand. I really would like to. Yeah, that box was really, really heavy. So this is where all the goodies is located. Oh, we got all sorts of mechanical switches and trimmers for the different multipliers and all the fantastic thingies hidden in here. Tons of tubes and stuff. So I need to figure out where is frequency modulation created and where's the 50 megahertz uh, no the 30 megahertz oscillator 
So, let's consult the schematic again. And they have been nice and friendly to put in numbers for all the tubes. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here, here we go. So that should be fairly easy to navigate around here and figure out where are we. Good. So it's not going to be a... Let's go and guess. Can't find any names on those two. Let's consult the manual, shall we? So I'm done cleaning all the contacts. Uh, I've been around all the different mode switches and uh, everything here. So I will, will actually power it up and see if my FM modulation is back. And if the uh, missing low band is missing, it is uh, back because um, it's actually uh, powered by the different uh, band switches and contacts. Then this is the 30 megahertz uh, oscillator and uh, mixer circuit, and uh, that is done by V7. So uh, probably there's no light in the bulb, but it's probably that easy, isn't it? Meanwhile, we can have a little look at the frequency adjustments. It's done in this four, five section variable capacitor it is really beautiful also with the gearing and all that we got the different uh, oscillators and uh, and uh, triplers and doublers all the way here Don't you just love it when all you need is a little bit of cleaning? Oh yeah, we can adjust the carrier here so it's good again. So that will be 1.9 megahertz. And I adjusted here for 2 megahertz, so it's uh, really close. And this um, band switch here is a little bit, as you can see here, ooh, critical. So that means I still need to clean it a little bit more, but it is only a mechanical problem. Then it's going to uh, work again. And uh, all the other ranges, they still work, of course. Now I just need uh, FM modulation to be uh, working. So here's my little handy receiver. Let's listen. Haha, -ha, I got my FM back. So, all bad connections. I mean, that is just really nice. And if we listen to... So this is the background. You can hear. is really possible oh you can hear it starting to drift a little bit <laughs> but it's actually accurate enough for narrow band fm okay i just turned it on so of course it needs to heat up and be stable and all that right but <laughs> I'm really happy about that. The signal is, of course, very, very weak. And what you hear here is, of course, contacts. Probably, yeah, the FM, that is the buggy contact with the FM modulation, but I kind of got it, right? I can also go to CV and then all this. See? All the loose connections. Oh, we got a little bit of... Can you hear it? <laughs> oh, that's funny. But I think uh, that concludes uh, the task of today. 
to get this uh, thing nice and shiny. I also cleaned, see, the contacts here. Now you can operate these without uh, using a big wrench. Okay, this one is still a little bit tough, but it kind of goes. Yeah. All right. Thank you for watching and please come again tomorrow.